already I got finished up with beans last night. So I'm gonna take all the shields off. We'll drive it up on the hill and uh, give it a good good clean off, try to get all this chaff off before we switch over to corn. This kinda helps, you know, keep it keep the stuff clean, dump the rock trap, lift the grain tank covers up, get it all cleaned out, and then uh, switch all the necessary things to get the to get it to be on corn corn settings check some elevator tension check some belt tension and uh, go hook the corn head up and do some calibrations it's the super bowl of the harvest corn picking beans for the birds Big dog, ready to eat. Uh, everything's calibrated except for the deck plates. We're gonna try adjusting the sensor, see if we can get it to calibrate. Got some chaff and crap built up there, so we're gonna get that cleaned out. And we will go start picking corn. Big dog eat. Oh man, a guy forgets how much he misses this site. In uh, the Zaski zone, area 21. Pull in, start dumping. Probe for moisture, let the corn dump, take in all the views. Oh man, favorite time of year. At least I kind of struggle during bean harvest. You just like, it sucks. You gotta have beans, but you just, you just suck. It's corn picking time. It's, it's Super Bowl, man. Let's just, let's go. Hey, here we are back to corn picking. Done with beans. Wow. What a relief. Here is our crossing. Going over to this piece across the creek here. Boy, this is nice. Look at this. Got that all lined up with concrete. We used to have to go down the road, take the head off. Now we just drive across here and get started. Yeah, how fun is that? Simple thing, something that cost you about $3,000 to make is just worth the like 10 seconds of relief you get. It's how awesome. Got a little 10 acre patch here across the creek. Get some of these small fields out of the way, getting the dryer wound up. At the airport, combining corn over yonder, I'm driving through the field to pick up a load. And what do I see? Huh. They always make fun of me. Hey dad, you're spilling too much corn in the field. You know whose field this is? Yeah, it's me and the Chiefs. Look at this. Really? I mean, come on, man. Anyway, it's in the eye of the beholder sometime. That right there does darn near what these three do. Not quite, but if these are actually doing 35 gallon, I. I don't know, I doubt it. Was it 60? I believe the service truck was like 30. Unit. Absolute tank. Let the games begin. What we live for, corn harvest 2022. Later. What a pretty sight to see. A couple of pretty girls. Well, they're a little dirty right now, but. Well, made a mistake, but I about got it fixed. I'm obviously inside the dryer right now. Let me show you what I got going on. So right here is the conveyor that unloads the dryer, and these are the metering rolls that unload it as the corn comes down these columns. I didn't realize until we got going, but a few of these got plugged up. We must have not had them cleaned out very well which in hindsight, it's my bad, honest mistake. But I was just trying to figure out how to clean these out because there's a bunch of chaff and stuff that accumulated in the bottom of some of these columns. As you can see, these ones are nice and clear. I was able to come in here, open this up, take that access door up and let the corn come out. The first couple I did from the outside and made a mess. So luckily I was able to figure it out to do it this way. 
Now I can open up the trap door on the outside and not make such a mess. So here's the last one, getting it dumped out before we empty the bottom out. The way she goes. Well folks, as you can kind of tell, we're back hard at it again on corn, done with the beans, just hammering down. We've got the 12 row going, 712 folding corn head, 790. I got the 8400 rolling, we just got this hooked up today to the good old reliable 840 grain cart. It's got extension, so it holds about 900 bushel. Got the 8520 over here, the 1050. 9870 is about three miles to the south of us, combining corn. So yeah, it's just been going pretty good. Just hammer down. Well, finally got the dryer cleaned out. I thought I had everything clean, ready to go. It turns out there's a few spots I forgot to check. Honest mistake, could have been a lot worse. I'm lucky I figured out there's a way to relieve those columns from the inside of the dryer. And once I did that, I could go back outside. Derek helped me out, open up some shields, and there's some chaff, some trash that got caught in there that I wasn't allowing the grain to fall through. So I got it all cleaned out. The mess on the ground could have been double or triple what was there. So we'll get that cleaned up. Um, looks like it hey, could be a chance of rain. So once I get things going again, we shut down for the day. I'll have to get the loader tractor out and get that mess cleaned up. We're just uh, gonna call it quits for tonight. Wet bin's kind of full and mustard's been kind of messing around with the dryer, having some problems. We'll go see what that's like. Driving 2020 back, loaded, we'll get her dumped. Picking corn, honey badger. Get the rest of these end rows off here. I'm pulling our driveway. I'll have a load. You know, there's just something about these old 379s. I mean, don't get me wrong. The 389s are super nice. They drive nice. 359, she's a beast. But the 379, when you're in here, now nah, I know, I know. Don't, don't even. It's dirty, I know. But this truck just, I don't know if it's the wood dash, the, the seat is, you know, good and wore in. The wood steering wheel, it just, it's just comfy. It feels like you're sitting in your living room just, just chilling. I'll clean it, I know. I'll, I'll blow it out today.
Well, if you guys want to see the fleet, here's five out of the six. Blue, yellow, Bobcat, red, Freightliner. Got the seed corn home trucks home today, so we're getting the trailers washed. Got blue hooked up and dolled up and ready to go for some grain hauling. We're getting the white trailer cleaned up now. I'm gonna put it away. If anybody knows, these old 855 Cummins like to blow a little black smoke. So with the stack facing up out towards this end of the trailer, this trailer from about right there back to there, down just a little bit, was full black. Look what the TNT soap is doing. You can tell the soap is nice, dirty, black. And now Derek's doing the initial rinse. Get that stuff working in there again. Here's the good stuff. Look how dirty that is. The soap should be white, not black. Oh my goodness. That is wild. That corner right there was straight black, that little part right there, and just faded a little, little better as it went through, but that soap is amazing. Yeah. You know, I think we could actually Maybe hit it one more time, let it work in again. But that is amazing. trucks out just as fast as we're hauling it in. You gotta keep the feet fed and open for North Corn. Despite the flukes, I'm having to empty the dryer and get it cleaned out to get in the overhead bin stuck, I'm having to get it unplugged. Finally got it working right so we can load corn out. Things are, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say anything positive. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say things are working. When we first built this shed, dump building, we were like debating whether or not it's just overkill two lanes, you got a dump pit, you got a secondary pit, two overheads. What you just saw was a prime example of why this all worked out and was a good thing. I mean, I was able to dump truck and load a truck at the exact same time. The truck isn't, dumping isn't held up, and the truck that needs loaded isn't waiting on the truck to dump. It just keeps flowing. Now, not all the time, it doesn't happen super often where you got to dump and load at the same time, but it works out and we know that we're capable of doing it. Keeps the combine moving, keeps the dry corn moving out. If we're hauling out in season, it's a cycle. The faster you can get the corn out of the field, the more you save your yield, and the faster you can move it out to create space because the corn's yielding so good. It's a giant system, keep it fed. You gotta keep the beast fed. Capture a little before video on the rear. And after, look at that. I see myself in there. Real deal. At the end of the night, got the dryer set like I want it, fingers crossed. Then it's automatic continuous flow mode. Just gonna let it run overnight and let it do its thing. Oh yeah, look at that baby steam. It's starting to get a little cold out. She is drying some corn. Hopefully she's still running when I get back.